Yeah, welcome back to DXB Today, where we are focusing on the rise, the rise and the rise of the parent entrepreneur. It is, um, well, it's an area, a landscape that's growing all the time at the moment. Uh, and to that end, let's now meet our next guest uh, this uh, evening, an award-winning serial impact <laughs> entrepreneur, no less. Uh, shaping the public and the private sectors here in the MENA region through her expertise in education, in tech, and of course, Web3. Please welcome to the show uh, the founder of The Happy Box, Jumana Al Darwish. Jumana, Jumana, always good to see you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm welcome. so excited. Welcome, good welcome. Good to have you here on the sofa. Good to have you on the show as well. And celebrating a very significant anniversary as well. Absolutely. 10 years of happiness. The box is uh, 10 years 10 old. 10 years. Um, it's a decade of happiness. A decade of happiness. <laughs> we'll take us back. Let's, take, let's th open that box up. And, and why? why? Why did you create the happy box 10 um, years ago? So I saw, actually, I found a gap in the market at the time. Dubai and the UAE actually, there was an influx of migrants and especially families. And I thought of bringing the Happy Box to the UAE and the community here because of the art centric nature and then also providing opportunities <coughs> for families to bond together. And although the concept is, you know, um, craft boxes are very popular in the West, they were not necessarily popular or even known within the Middle East and North Africa region. And so I took that opportunity and I launched the Happy Box and I actually launched it out of inspiration for my own daughter, who at the time was two, her name is Ayla. And basically she is my Happy Box and we kind of grew with the business and now reflecting on 10 years of great gratitude and support, um, we've managed to really kind of spread happiness across the UAE and globally. Um, we also host a number of community activations. We also have a studio at Sirkal Avenue. So the venture has, you know, it started humble beginnings on my dining room table, later moved to the garage and globally. Um, so boxes here we got are. Bigger. The boxes <laughs> got big. The dream got bigger. <laughs> so your daughter, so you, let me do the maths here. So your daughter's sure. 13. Yes, she's 13. So mine's 13. Yes. Joelle's Mine is 13. 13 as well. There must have been sank in the water around those. Yeah. You, you've all experienced the happy box we at have, some we point. Have. Indeed, I remember. It was great times. So you would say your daughter is the inspiration behind the Absolutely. Happy box, would you say? She, I mean, she is my happy box. At the time, I was a new mom as well. And I was really trying to find a product that is art-centric, educational, really supports in enhancing a child's cognitive and motor development skills. And it's not a box where you just find goods from external suppliers. Actually, we produce everything. So within our artisans, we, we have a factory, we have our own artisans. So everything is custom made. Everything comes from a place of, of love, but also it is educational based as well. So it's very impactful. And that's how the, the ethos actually was built within that. And Part of the work that we do also, we give back extensively to the community. So we have a Happy Hearts Global Program. It's our CSR arm, um, where we gift educational kits that are approved by the United Nations to children in need globally. Um, we've been to 11 countries, yeah, tens of thousands of children, and we hope to be able to do a lot more than that. So, yeah. That's fantastic. <laughs> Great. Jumana. I remember you sent me a box for Ella yes. 10 years ago, like literally when you first started. <laughs> and I remember I fell in love with the concept, not only that this was something that I was going to enjoy with Ella, and like it's going to make me bond even more with my daughter, but also the fact that it was giving back to the community. Yes. But I wanted to ask you, at the time I remember, and I remember very well, mm -hmm. it was very girly, the box. Mm -hmm. Did you have boxes for girls and boxes for boys? Absolutely. So over the years, we have transitioned as one would. You know, I think I was a bit biased at first because I have my own yeah. daughter, but we definitely, it's gender neutral. Uh, we have over 250 <coughs> products that we have launched and developed, and they are for both boys and girls, and it's customized. So. The beauty of the work that we've done is that we've evolved along the way and um, and looking back now it caters to the masses okay. and to the entire you know to the entire community at large. That's yeah. amazing. <laughs> Fascinating concept. Jumana, can you tell us a little bit more about Happy Hearts Global? Sure. So Happy Hearts Global, my background, I'm a philanthropist and I'm in social development. So prior to starting the Happy Box, I worked for the government for a good 10 years. 
um, both UAE and, uh, and Jordanian government. And so part of the work that my upbringing was all about giving back. And so although the Happy Box, obviously there has to be a for-profit element to it, it is very much impact-based and it's all about giving back. And so when I became an entrepreneur, I could never really, I never saw myself as a for-profit entrepreneur. <laughs> And that's when I, from the beginning, from the first year, we launched Happy Hearts Global. And essentially, we gift happy boxes, which are educational kits in war-torn uh, you know, communities and zones, in refugee camps, to orphans, to children in need. And we've been to 11 countries so far. We work with all the big um, NGOs globally, so everything is very transparent and, um, and very you know, uh, impact-based for the work that we do. Uh, eventually, I would love to set up schools all around the world. So that is kind of the next step for Happy Hearts Global. Joelle, you joined me on one of I our know. trips uh, yeah. to uh, one of the refugee camps That's and true. you got a chance to see it firsthand. But really, it's about it's about spreading as much happiness as we can in the most uh, needed of places. Isn't it amazing that just earlier I was saying my dream for Dabdoub and Dabdoub is only a year old. <laughs> My dream for Dabdoub is to have like orphanage mm -hmm. a program uh, that is holds the name Dabdoub to help the orphans to find a permanent home. And that your thing you were saying right now is that what you wish for is that you develop something much bigger than the happy box. Absolutely. But if we want to prioritize from day one, if you could remember going back mm -hmm. 10 years back or when you were planning it, maybe 12 years back, <laughs> what, 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 are the criteria and what is the priority of your criteria mm -hmm. one of them being making money or not making money or one of them being just creating a, a product that mm -hmm. is new in the market but what are the criteria and what is honestly the it was uh, for me it was about innovation mm. so when i when i started it was about impact and innovation those are the two key elements profit was never um my immediate requirement and actually i had difficulty learning how to make money. I'm so good at giving things for free I don't know and complimentary to, money, to the public. And at one point, even my consultants, my financial consultants, they're like, hold on. <laughs> it has to be a self-sustainable company. Yeah. And I think, you know, for me, I think when you do good, ultimately money comes after. Yeah. And it really does. It's really about the passion. If you, if you know what you're doing, if you have an innovative product, if there is a market for your product, eventually your company will grow and it will supersede efforts. And, and you have passion for your product. Yes, absolutely. There needs a lot of passion absolutely. to drive that product forward, uh, to keep on giving it so much of your own absolutely. personal time. I think it's the yeah. passion, but then also having the right team on board. We've been very fortunate. My team has been with me for 10 years now. Wow. But how have you yeah. been able to, as well, keep mm -hmm. relevance and keep putting smiles on faces mm -hmm. in a gig economy, in a digital economy? You right. know, when children are addicted to iPads absolutely. and screens, etc. and yet, <laughs> You still see the smiling. I mean, is that something you can I factor think, in? I think that was actually our competitive, competitive, competitive advantage. Yes. Was the fact that we took families back to basics. Yeah. And so what you see in the market, there are all these incredible products and my daughter uses them as well. I mean, we all do. But essentially, it's really going back to the basics and that's what the happy box gave. That's where the connection comes. Exactly. Yeah. It's about taking that moment in time, doing beautiful art-centric activities, not knowing that you're learning, but you are learning along the way. Mm -hmm. And it's about bringing siblings together, uh, together, families together. And I remember, you know, I would find moms used to feel so good about themselves because, you know, of this opportunity to, to just disconnect. And, and to be able to really spend quality time. Disconnect correctly rather than exactly. Mom, where's the Wi-Fi gone? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and you know, and if you ask any of our clients from years, reoccurring clients, they'll tell you that there isn't anything like our product in the market. And Simona, I, I, I used see this to, with pride. You know? I used to take them with me on holiday oh, because you? they were yeah. so properly packed. Thank you. And I knew that they're not going to go everywhere. Yeah. And this <laughs> instruction, I used to take them on holiday. I, this, I used to do exactly the <laughs> really? same thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 But you said it was 10 years ago yeah. since you got yours. And it was the same for me yeah. as well. So I think we're both due a new I box. Remember, <laughs> I remember your children, <laughs> literally. We're, 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 we're due a new box. Absolutely. I need the box for anything. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, Absolutely. Jumana, thank you so much thank for being here. Thank you so here. much. We, and like, you're doing an amazing I'm thing. I'm so grateful. Keep keeping on. And thank you for celebrating our 10 years. Thank yeah. you. It's a Thank pleasure. You. Thank you so much. Now, today's spotlight is on an educational consultant helping families promote learning and fun by redesigning play spaces to become more child friendly. This is Sarah Haroon from Wonder Room.
Hi, my name is Sara Samawi and I'm the founder of Wonder Room. Uh, Wonder Room is a playroom design company where we focus on education. So we curate toys, we consult with families, and we create playrooms that are not just aesthetically beautiful, but are also functional for children to learn and grow. Well, during COVID, I noticed that there was a huge gap between how children play at home and the skills that they need for learning. So we um, designed the playroom with the child um, in mind. And in that process, we educate the families on how to engage with their children, how to ask questions, so that the children are really enjoying the space and growing at home. Well, every playroom that is completed is a milestone that we celebrate. The families often uh, share with us how uh, their children are playing differently, they are happier, the whole family gets to enjoy the space. So that really means a lot to us and that's a milestone that we celebrate. We have multiple goals, but on a smaller scale would be to continue to expand and to provide our services to other Emirates. And on a larger scale would be to, inshallah, one day provide our services to uh, children, uh, children in developing countries. Um, I love Dubai. Dubai is home, away from home, and I've been here for seven years. Uh, I believe that Dubai is a space that allows for everyone to be here, to grow, to really chase any dream that they have is a place that is inclusive and really support uh, small businesses. Time for a quick break. Coming up, we meet the team behind Baby Expo. Plus, we hear the remix of the classic song, Desert Rose. So don't go anywhere. <laughs> 